Okay, so this video is about pericarditis. Pericarditis is an inflammation of the parietal and visceral uh, surfaces of the pericardium. You all know that the heart is surrounded by parietal and visceral uh, pericardium. The visceral pericardium directly surrounds the uh, heart and the parietal uh, comes after that. Okay, between them we have the pericardial fluid okay so an inflammation of the parietal and visceral surfaces of the pericardium will lead to pericarditis itis is an inflammation pericardium is the uh, uh, lining of the heart okay so most of cases of pericarditis will lead to accumulation of a fluid in the pericardium space the end of the story of the this fluid may be completely absorbed okay and maybe cause a pericardial thickening fibrosis okay and maybe constriction of the pericardium this is the uh, huge thing about the pericarditis okay the type of fluid that may occupy the pericardial space and pericarditis may be serous fluid or fibrinous fluid maybe perlant fluid okay like in bacterial infections perinent fluid or hemorrhagic fluid okay and so on or one of these or more may be present cirrus fibrinous perinent and hemorrhagic fluid now let's move to the causes of pericarditis like uh, when i, I uh, explain the myocarditis I told you that we have infectious and non-infectious causes of myocarditis also uh, pericarditis has infectious and non-infectious causes and also again the viral infection is the most common cause of pericarditis it was also in the myocarditis viruses like what like Coxsackie P again influenza virus eco virus adenovirus all of them can be cause of viral infection of the pericardium okay also we may have bacterial infection like in pneumonia strep infection mycoplasma tp infection very important don't forget okay in, in bacterial infection or bacterial pericarditis we have a perlant a fluid perlant a fluid and the treatment of this or the management is to open a drain and remove adhesions open a drain and remove the adhesions this is the first time of treatment then you have to give antibiotics this is the first type of pericarditis the infectious one the non-infectious pericarditis may be due to the connective tissue diseases like an SLE and rheumatic fever part of pancarditis okay in juvenile uh, rheumatoid arthritis anything anything like that may cause pericarditis rheumatoid arthritis SLE rheumatic fever okay in juvenile rheumatoid arthritis you have to treat with steroid this is the first case of non-infectious causes of pericarditis to be connective tissue disorder the, the second thing is to have metabolic disorder that caused the pericarditis like in uremia uremia the uremia is a result of prolonged severe renal failure and this will lead to chemical irritation of the pericardium and pericarditis as a result so uremia is very important cause of pericarditis hyperthyroidism also okay what else rather than the metabolic and connective tissue disorders neoplasms okay the pericardium is in a place where we have a lung a mediastinum okay and other things okay and neoplasm in this area may lead to pericarditis like hodgkin lymphoma for example like leukemia lymphosarcoma okay hodgkin leukemia lymphosarcoma also a trauma a trauma may be a cause of pericarditis how does the patient with pericarditis present what is the presentation of the pericarditis the patient may come with it to you with a history of upper respiratory tract infection do you remember when i talked about the myocarditis also it comes after history of per, uh, upper respiratory tract infection why because the viral infection is the most common cause of pericarditis so the story starts from the 
upper spatial tract to the viral infection then uh, descend to the pericardium causing the pericarditis okay the pericarditis is associated with pericardial pain and the nature of the pericardial pain is that it is dull itching or stabbing like pain stabbing like pain this pain increases with lying down when you sleep at your bed okay it will in uh, increase and decreases with sitting or leaning forward okay decrease with sitting or leaning forward and here a point to differentiate this type of pain from pa uh, pancreatitis In pancreatitis when you lean forward it increases ag aggravated okay but in pericarditis it decreases with leaning forward but when you sleep it increases with radiation to the left shoulder and neck you may also have uh, symptoms like cough dyspnea fever especially if we have bacterial or perlant uh, pericardite rarely in some cases we have a huge sufficient accumulation of a fluid that will cause as uh, something or condition which is cardiac tamponade which is an urgent condition okay so what is cardiac tamponade it is a clinical syndrome caused by accumulation of such a suf sufficient a huge amount of fluid in the pericardial space resulting in reduced ventricular filling okay and subsequent hemodynamic compromise this is normal it makes sense because if you have a huge amount of fluid in the pericardium space that will reduce the size of ventricles and reduces the ability of the ventricles to uh, uh, to receive the good amount of fluid that should receive okay so it will have a uh, hemodynamic compromisation as a result okay it is uh, again an emergency case what are the symptoms or manifestations of cardiac tamponade you will have variable degree of shock and this is again makes sense this makes sense again okay because uh, the heart is unable to uh, pump the uh, enough amount of uh, fluid to the uh, uh, to, to to the body uh, parts okay and this will lead to variable degrees of shock depends on the amount of the cardiac tamponade you may have neck vein distension neck vein distension okay because of the accumulation of fluid in the right side of the heart you will have neck vein distension okay venous pressure will be elevated and the elevation of venous pressure is a pathognomic thing for the pericarditis distant heart sound uh, makes sense again because in uh, pericarditis cardiac tamponade you have a lot of fluid that surrounds the heart okay and will muffle the sound of the heart so it is normal to have distant heart sound blood pressure that falls with respiratory uh, with respiration i'm sorry okay when you respire air you will have a blood pressure that falls with it this is what we call pulsus paradoxus pulsus paradoxus again is a sign of a cardiac tamponade hepatomegaly why because this is the heart okay this is the in to the heart and this is the out to the heart here we have cardiac tamponade it will reduce the end this will reduce okay and accumulate here in every organ that it comes from the liver is one of the most important organs that uh, make uh, makes the end to the heart so uh, the, we will have accumulation of the liver and hepatomegaly we have a tachycardia as a compensatory mechanism to the shock that results from the cardiac tamponade pulmonary edema shock and death if you have a severe cardiac tamponade so again let's get back to the our subject pericarditis we said that patient when we come with upper respiratory tract infection we told you that we have a pain in pericarditis which is a pericardial pain and we described it okay how it goes how it comes uh, okay now in physical examination what we notice in pericarditis we will have what we call pericardial friction drop what is pericardial friction drop okay in seconds i'm going to uh, 
to, to make you know what is pericardial friction loop. We have a distant heart sound, especially if we have a cardiac tamponade pulses paradoxes, uh, also with cardiac tamponade or sufficient amount of fluid. Murmur usually are absent, okay? Usually we have no murmurs. Now, what is a pericardial friction loop? It is the sound of a uh, uh, frictioning the pericardial, pericardial together. Okay, I'm just going to make you hear this. Okay. In a pericardial friction rub, there are three sounds, one systolic and two diastolic. The systolic sound may occur anywhere in systole, and the two diastolic sounds occur at the times the ventricles are stretched. This stretching occurs in early diastole and at the end of diastole. The pericardial friction rub has a scratching, grating, or squeaking leathery quality. It tends to be high in frequency and best heard with a diaphragm. A pericardial friction rub is a sign of pericardial inflammation and may be heard in infective pericarditis, in myocardial infarction, following cardiac surgery, trauma, and in autoimmune problems such as rheumatic fever. They are frequently best heard at the left lateral sternal border, with a patient leaning forward or lying supine in deep expiration. To simulate a pericardial friction rub, grasp the diaphragm of the stethoscope in the palm of your hand, and then rub the back of that hand with the finger of your other hand. The following example displays a typical friction rub recorded at the left sternal border of a male with pericarditis. Both the systolic and diastolic components of the rub are heard. Okay, so this is pericardial friction rub. Now, from presentation of pericarditis, we move to the investigations, how to investigate for pericarditis. It's a heart problem, so it's normal to do an ECG, okay? An ECG, you can see low voltage QRS, just like in myocarditis, low voltage QRS. This is a low voltage QRS. You can notice in this ECG, okay? Initially, ST elevation is also, this is initial ST elevation and uh, this ECG, okay, initial ST elevation, initial ST elevation. You can notice that, okay, it is also a sign of pericarditis. T inversion after two to four weeks, that's not that important. After ECG, we can do chest X-ray and chest X-ray, we can see cardiomegaly and the cardiomegaly may constitute a shape of the of the heart like water bottle shape no, water bottle shape heart this is water bottle shape heart just like a bottle from the accumulation of the fluid so ecg chest x-ray and you can also see increased pulmonary vascular markings because of the accumulation of the fluid and echocardiogram is the first investigation to be done it is diagnostic for effusion and detecting the tamponade. Okay, so this is the echocardiogram. It's very obvious that we have effusion here. Okay, so we have pericarditis. This is a pericardium. This is the myocardium. Between them, we have effusion. So this is the investigation to be done in pericarditis. Now let's move to the final thing about pericarditis, the management of pericarditis. You will have to do pericardiosynthesis to know the nature of the fluid in the pericardium if it is permanent pericarditis okay then it is a bacterial pericarditis we have to do urgent surgical drainage of this permanent pericarditis and to give iv antibiotic to the bacterial pericarditis if we have a viral pericarditis actually we have no specific treatment for viral pericarditis okay if we have a metabolic disorder like uremia collagen disorders as i said in the first uh, 
uh, thing uh, uh, in the f uh, at the beginning of the lecture okay we have to specifically treat the metabolic disorder if we have a kidney uh, renal failure we have to treat it we have to treat the uremia the collagen disorder because it constitutes a chemical irritation to the heart okay if we have a severe rheumat rheumatic carditis we have to treat with corticosteroid okay again rheumatoid arthritis these all are immune disorders that are treated by corticosteroids if we have non-bacterial or non-rheumatic okay we have no bacterial pericarditis we can't treat with surgical drainage and IV antibiotic okay and either we don't have rheumatoid arthritis so we can treat with corticosteroids what is the solution then it is to use salicylate okay salicylate is the treatment of choice in this case okay this is all about pericarditis talk to you about the definition of pericarditis the causes of pericarditis infectious and non-infectious okay the cardiac tamponade okay and talk to you about the presentation of pericarditis in history physical examination the nature of pain and pericarditis uh, okay and the investigations of pericarditis ecg the chest x-ray and the echocardiogram i make me uh, <coughs> okay and then i move to the management of pericarditis pericardiosynthesis to identify the cause and to compress in the cases of tamponade the pericardiosynthesis is the must is the treatment of tamponade okay okay and that's it thank you very much for watching see you in the